gentlemen, we are now going to resume the conference and we'll begin the second session of the conference in a short while. Before we begin, I would like to inform you that the live updates of the conference can be found at the Twitter handle BCSTI20181. All of you are requested to please follow the Twitter handle. To begin the next session, session 1B, Science, Technology, and Innovations for Addressing Wildlife and Forest Crimes, Geospatial Technologies. Our chairperson will be Professor Yoshifumi Yasuka, Professor Emeritus at the University of Tokyo, and his co-chair will be Ms. Margaret Mayamba, Cabinet Secretary, National Commission for Science, Technology, and Innovation, Kenya. that the podium on the right of the stage shall be used for all presentations uh, on your right, my left. Thank you. So, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great honor and pleasure to join this conference um, and uh, discuss the geospatial technology application for science, technology, and innovation for addressing wildlife and forest crime. Um, it is my great pleasure to be here again. I started the joint research with AIT in 1985 almost uh, 35 years ago. Uh, some of you were not born yet, but uh, we started the joint research with IT almost 35 years ago. Uh, my research background is remote sensing and geospatial uh, technology. This session uh, is co-chaired by myself and uh, Ms. Marat Maimba. Uh, Chief Scientist, National Commission for Science, Technology, and Innovation, Kenya. Uh, first half, uh, I will chair the session, and the latter half, uh, she will chair the session. And already, uh, almost 20 minutes behind the schedule, so I will ask all speakers, keep time, please. Okay. Before starting uh, the presentation by seven speakers, I would like to uh, summarize the concept in this field, a geospatial technology application. Oops, no. Okay, I, I'll move here. Uh, this session focuses on geospatial science technology and innovation for monitoring illegal poaching and trafficking and for establishing a spatial and non-spatial information management system for wildlife and forest. 1999, UNESCO and ICSU, uh, International Union International Scientific Union declare that the science for society and science in society, they have already declaration that uh, they added these term, science for society and science in society, besides science for knowledge, science for peace, science and science for development. We have many unsolved problems, although many scientific papers have been published and a lot of new knowledge has been 
acquired? What is missing and what should we add to realize sustainable world? Collaboration between science, technology, and innovation and society has started since then. However, still we have a lot of problems, including biodiversity issue. What we should do? SDGs is one of the uh, achievement to tackle with these issues. Science, technology, and innovation should be implemented in society with very new science and technology. In this session, we address, this, we address on how to collect data, share data, share knowledge, share system, integrate data, knowledge, and system on tackling poaching and trafficking with society. This concept with society is very important. We have to implement the new technologies, DNA technologies, geospatial technologies, in the management system, control system, in transforming our society. This chart summarizes the research actions, <coughs> observation or survey, remote sensing is a part of this. These, this, these observation technologies, survey technologies, are the first step to do that. And we need sometimes modeling to get the uh, future information and also we need the intelligence with simulation but we have this part this part is a sort of understanding our world and this these technologies should be linked with countermeasure devising and control and management this part is for improving our world. These technologies should be integrated together. And also, we have to feedback the policy, uh, control policy or management policy to the origin, that is the observation. We have to evaluate what, how it was successful, it was, they were successful. This feedback cycle is very important. Uh, if this cycle is completed, we may say it is socially implemented. And on the left hand top, DNA technologies or geospatial technologies, we have to really need this research. And also, from the beginning, I'll say the uh, final group in my final session. Besides this understanding technology, or improving technology, science, we need to consider how our world should be. Without this aspect, we cannot do anything to our biodiversity. Bio I think these three aspects to realize new uh, Geospatial technology can cover very local, regional, and global you know, We need to do many things. Let me show you only one example. Uh, this is Brazilian kids. Uh, Manatee Okay, thank you. Okay. Manatee is one of the very important species, species uh, along the Amazon River area. They have, they have been facing with their uh, uh, extinction due to their uh, hunting, illegal hunting by the local people. They use this for their foods. Mothers are illegally hunted by fishermen for its meat. And 
and babies have been released in nature with, uh, without any protection. And uh, researchers started to do something for this issue. I'm sorry I don't have time. Uh, I, I'll show you some, only the result. They put the uh, logo on the back of the baby uh, manatee, and they check the, their behaviors. These are the spatial data. Uh, they have now 19 uh, samples. The point here is that, please look at the uh, left top, field assistants. They are former fishermen. They hunted and eat at the manatee, but they are involved in this activity, the monitoring activity and protecting activities themselves. This is a part of the social implementation of the new technology. Zero ship spatial technology. Monitoring is a first step, but this part is uh, done by fishermen. Next example is larva growing. I, I'm sorry, I don't have time, so I will rush. Uh, uh, 30 years ago, oh no, I, as I mentioned, I, 30 years ago, I started the joint research with AIT. Um, 15 years ago, I installed the satellite data receiving station here at AIT on the top of the building, GIC. And we started to receive satellite data here and at Tokyo. All data received at Bangkok was transferred to Tokyo midnight on the same day and analyzed. And the result were sent back to Ireland next day. One example is forest fire monitoring. Uh, this is a collaboration between uh, University of Tokyo, AIT, and Thailand GISTA. This is a two countries collaboration, but all data are distributed to the, group, uh, the world. More than one million data was used by the global users per year, per year. This is one example, and the point is the old data received at AIT was transferred to IAS Tokyo, midnight, and all data is analyzed, in this case, by FRCGC to predict the tomorrow fire, or day after tomorrow fire. We can predict the future condition of forest fire, and it was fed back to the Royal Forest uh, Department, uh, Forest Fire Control Division, to prevent their uh, extension of the forest fire. This is one example. We need to share paper, we need to share knowledge, we need to share together. In this session, seven speakers will demonstrate to you what the, 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 the most latest technologies. But in the near future, we will integrate all in, in our society together. Now, let me introduce you the first speaker. Uh, first speaker uh, is Mr. Kyoichi Ito. Uh, his presentation title is Life, uh, Wildlife Monitoring by Remote Sensing. So, Mr. Ito, please. Fifteen minutes. Yes. <laughs> Okay. 
Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Kyu Chito of World Sensing Technologies and Center of Japan. Uh, today, let me introduce the uh, wildlife monitoring by remote sensing. So, remote sensing means uh, we will use satellite data. Uh, we understand that uh, only satellite data is not enough uh, for the wildlife monitoring. Then, uh, we will combine the information from satellite, the information of UAB, and information from drone, okay, and uh, mobile. Excuse me? Excuse me? What happened? So, okay, so uh, let me uh, introduce briefly uh, RESTEC itself. So, RESTEC was established in 1971 uh, on August 1st. And uh, uh, last year we obtained a uh, uh, certificate of survey management the status. Then, so uh, now we can uh, officially join the project of mapping and survey, surveillance and research and so on. Okay, so now you do this one. Okay, then so what that? Yeah. Oh, this is not PowerPoint. Maybe P P D. Ah, uh, you, you cannot. You don't use a problem. You cannot. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so my PowerPoint uh, file can't open. Then, so I would like to use a PDF file. So uh, this is uh, the agenda of my presentation. So one is a company, a company open, I have already explained, and activities, and the government policy, and the satellite data utilization. So deforestation, and mapping, and last one is uh, our wildlife monitoring systems. Okay, so uh, sorry, uh, this doesn't work. A duplicate screen. Oh yeah, yeah. Change. So it is so. Some total uh, overflow, uh, but uh, the list of remote sensing systems. So, the uh, first one, okay. so gray color is list uh, of under the contract with JAXA, uh, Japan Space Agency. And the other means uh, technical uh, support, for example, uh, uh, remote sensing training. Uh, research and development. Uh, this means uh, that we developed the software and uh, satellite data analysis. And uh, bottom line is uh, risk business. So capac capacity buildings and the satellite data provision and the value-added products and the uh, solution service and the consultation. So my colleague, uh, Mr. Kamei, uh, will explain in details about uh, Animal sensing training and the capacity buildings in the session three uh, tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Next 
page, please. Next page. Okay, then. Okay, so uh, the system there a little bit has uh, some problem about to show my presentation documents. So, uh, anyway, so two years ago, uh, ticket five, uh, ticket six uh, held in Nairobi. Ticket six uh, means uh, Tokyo uh, International Conference on African Development, and uh, we have a Nairobi implementation plan. And uh, uh, there are three pillars, and uh, to pillar number three, oh. <coughs> cannot change the page. Uh, okay, then so pillar three has uh, promoting social stabilities for shared prosperity, and uh, pillar three has. Uh, Pillar three has a, a five things. You can. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, pillar three, uh, global issues and uh, challenges, and the uh, nine declaration about uh, uh, pillar th uh, theme three. Uh, global issues and uh, challenging. So, uh, defend commits to address uh, climate change and deforestation and uh, desertification and poaching, uh, loss of uh, natural resources, food insecurity, uh, water and energy deficit and natural disasters, as well as uh, the impacts on migration on the society. And uh, now I would like to introduce uh, a remote sensing technology to use the satellite data. Uh, as you know, uh, there are many applications uh, for the satellite data. So uh, mapping, and agriculture, uh, forest, environment, disaster, and mine surveillance. As you may know, uh, there are two, basically, two, there are two kind of satellite data. Uh, one is a uh, optical sensor data. The other is a sad, uh, radar data, synthetic aperture radar. Uh, we can make up the color images by using the optical data, like uh, so left hand side images, Landsat. But uh, optical data is uh, observed the crowd. If the crowd condition is not in good. Uh, but uh, radar data is uh, black and white, but can penetrate the cloud. Then we can obtain the ground information under the cloud, the weather relation to the weather conditions. And uh, uh, today I would like to introduce uh, our JICA three-year project, uh, deforestation. So please see uh, these images. Two, we have two images. Uh, these images were taken by Elban Sar. So left hand is uh, uh, JER span uh, radar data uh, acquired in October 1996. On left side one is uh, Parsat data Elban Sar acquired in June. 2006. So in 10 years, so many changes around the forest. So the, the great color area is uh, the rainforest. And the dark area, like a black, shows an um, open area by logging. So there are many, many places that logged areas in 10 years. So our, our project is 
uh, implemented, carried out uh, in uh, Brazil, was funded by JICA. So Brazil had a development, real-time uh, detection of forestation systems, so-called data. Uh, they used uh, optical data of Brazilian satellite, CBAS, and Landsat. Then uh, cloud cover is always uh, problems. And the Brazil asked us to use, uh, how to use the radar data and the uh, cap uh, capability to set up, to install in these systems. So please see uh, uh, right side the three images uh, during the 10 uh, years. Uh, and uh, we show the red colors a newly locked area uh, in the target area. So we see uh, the uh, diagram on the uh, le left side. So this source uh, provided by IBAMA, a Brazilian Institute of Environment uh, and uh, Renewable uh, Natural Resources. So as in, we can see the graph the number of illegal lookings has been decreasing and decreasing. So by using the radar data. And the mapping. So this map is one of very important factors for uh, wildlife monitoring. So we need a base map uh, like a land use and land cover map with elevation to understand animal habitat uh, and uh, uh, animal movement. So, uh, DEM, digital elevation model, and to add a control line, and uh, to add a road and river water area, and land use information. And we can make a land use and land, land cover maps. And uh, this is one, uh, one of the sample 3D simulation images. So, digital land use uh, offers a range of statistically uh, uh, categorized classes. We, uh, we have uh, 12 categories in this sample data, uh, like uh, so forest, uh, water area, and uh, high buildings, and so on. And to use uh, such uh, information systems, so we understand now uh, about uh, so wildlife uh, preservation to between the so human beings and the uh, animals. So first, uh, human beings, uh, people, has a problem about the residents, so increasing the so population and the food problem, and wildlife. Uh, about uh, wildlife as a uh, uh, environment issues and uh, so hunt illegal hunting approaching and our solution uh, we would like to propose uh, some solutions uh, about how to resolve uh, such issues one is a uh, national special data in infrastructure include base map uh, uh, geography uh, vegetation soil water and so on and the management of our residents and monitoring field of animals activities and uh, real-time monitoring. So we understand that uh, uh, satellite data cannot uh, implement uh, the real-time so monitoring. Then so we uh, will use uh, UAV and drone for real-time monitoring. So to combine such information uh, uh, to complete uh, the useful information. And uh, this useful information will be inputted in, in the one-stop systems. And uh, the next presenter, so Mr. Otake of NTT Data, will explain uh, the information sharing system in details in his presentation. And this is the idea of uh, wild mountain systems. So one step, the middle yellow uh, color box means uh, 
information sharing systems. So to get that main information, for example, for HIS uh, analysis map, habitant sustainable index, a plus base map, uh, to, to be in, uh, included in these systems, and the stakeholders and so on can use uh, useful information from the information sharing system like this. And uh, they uh, will use uh, such useful information for uh, detection of illegal act and the conservation plan. And the rangers will, will also use a drone and a mobile uh, for the real time uh, monitoring. And uh, such information will be able to uh, used by scientists for field work and general users also will be used uh, such information for education or uh, some companies uh, will use uh, tourists like this. So this must means uh, bottom line is satellite data. Uh, as you may know, so recently the satellite data like a Landsat and Sentinel-1A, one, 1, 2, this data is uh, very uh, free. So uh, we don't need uh, a lot of money uh, for operational uh, cost. So we can use the free data to update the base maps. And that's uh, so soil, plus soil, information, water information. On top one is uh, the wild animal habitant uh, place of poaching, the red color, and the border zone uh, between the animal and the human uh, travel zone, and the residential area. Uh, this is uh, uh, our image uh, about the uh, wildlife mountain and the preservation in Africa by remote sensing. So first is uh, uh, base map by satellite data. So to make the base map including the information no, uh, geology, uh, vegetation, soil, water, and so on, to identify root of wild animal activities, our uh, uh, wild animal movement. For example, Landsat 8 data covers 185 kilometers. Uh, wise in its path. And its data is free, and the new data is acquired every 16 days. The Ransat 8 plus, Sentinel 1A, so uh, we will be able to update such a, a database uh, per, uh, within the seven days. And uh, to correct information uh, regardless of borders, maybe drone and the UAV. It is a little bit different to over the so borders, but the satellite data uh, is uh, uh, the borderless uh, images. And number two is a uh, uh, monitoring of illegal hunting uh, by UAB uh, to monitor poaching in wide area by UAB. So UAB flight range is some uh, 100 kilometers. Uh, when illegal hunters are detected, it's information with the uh, transmitted to rangers uh, of national uh, parks uh, such as KWS, and the crackdown will be carried out on poaching uh, through the once the uh, information sharing systems. And the last one is uh, uh, crackdown on poaching by drone. So each uh, platform of rangers has a drone and make uh, the crackdown on uh, poaching more efficient. So a uh, uh, recent uh, Japanese uh, uh, drone, uh, uh, it's about uh, six, uh, square kilometers in uh, one hour. And the flight time is about uh, 10 minutes. So uh, come and go, uh, per, uh, five kilometers. Uh, the poach investigation about uh, uh, target area can be carried out or uh, repeated uh, by the battery change 
and the uh, indi individual uh, could be discerned in the night by uh, infrared camera. Okay, then so uh, you know so the, the technology of uh, a drone is is increasing day and day. Then so we we can uh, use more specific. Uh, more, more capable uh, drone uh, systems and uh, weather satellite data. Uh, and uh, these data in the one stop shop uh, information sharing system. Then, uh, all uh, uh, regarding the uh, wildlife uh, can use such information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'm sorry, our technical problems. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we, we would accept a very quick comment or short comment. Is that okay? Okay. So uh, we, will, we would like to invite the next speaker. Next speaker is uh, Mr. Otake. His presentation title is Information Sharing Platform. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My, my name is Otake uh, from NPT Data Corporation in Japan. So I'm trying to finish my presentation within 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, my uh, presentation title is Information Sharing Platform. Uh, this is uh, uh, my presentation is focusing on geospatial information sharing system. Uh, Usually for NSDI, uh, stands for uh, National Geospatial uh, Data Infrastructure. So uh, actually, I'm from IT company, and I'm a uh, uh, personally uh, IT engineer. System. So today I will make a brief introduction about uh, uh, Indonesian NSDI system uh, that, that was uh, uh, developed by uh, NTT Data and the Indonesian government uh, a few years ago. So our company has a lot of branches uh, all over the world, including Asia, uh, US, and uh, uh, Europe and of course uh, Africa. So uh, let me start the main part, uh, introduction of NSDI. So uh, NSDI uh, is uh, like this, uh, between the uh, bottom and the top. Bottom is uh, geospatial data, uh, geospatial mapping data and uh, related information uh, data. 
and uh, the top one is uh, the application. So they are, you know, there are a lot of uh, geospatial application, GIS application, not only the uh, uh, car navigation, uh, urban planning, uh, wildlife, uh, so many applications there are. But uh, important is uh, how to control the uh, geospatial data. That is NSTI. So this is a concept of NSTI. And uh, uh, actually, uh, there are a lot of good example of NSTI. Uh, you can see on the right side. Uh, the first one is Inspire. Uh, this is coming from Europe. Europe, good example to share the geospatial information. And the US has a similar system called data.gov. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, Indonesia just started the Indonesian NSTI. So uh, here, uh, this is a trend of NSTI. And, uh, uh, actually, uh, from around the 1990s, uh, the several uh, countries like US, UK, and uh, European countries start to uh, create this kind of uh, geospatial data uh, sharing system. Uh, and uh, the trend uh, come to the Asia uh, around uh, two, 2000. So, uh, Japan uh, also adopt uh, this kind of uh, concept and uh, policy and uh, we Japanese government make a uh, uh, basic act on the geospatial information so and uh, you can see the right side uh, this is the current trend in Southeast Asia Southeast Asia also uh, try to utilize uh, NSDI uh, not only Indonesia, but also Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and the Singapore. So uh, NSDI is uh, this kind of uh, system. So on the bottom, you can see many ministries. These ministries uh, is like a forest ministry or natural resource ministry. So many ministries there are in, the, in one country, but uh, usually, the ministry uh, would like to keep their uh, map information uh, in their ministry. They do not want to uh, share the uh, map and the geospatial information to the, to the other ministry. Uh, that is because of their policy and uh, sometimes because of the technology. But uh, once the NSDI network system uh, is established, uh, many of the mapping data will be shared through the system. So that uh, means uh, the ministry do not need a duplicate investment for the mapping. So for example, one ministry uh, creates a map data. The other ministry do not invest, invest the mapping, map uh, again. They can share. Uh, that is the uh, uh, concept. So uh, next, uh, I would like to introduce our uh, use cases of Indonesian government. Uh, NTT Data uh, created the NSDI system uh, cooperate with the uh, Indonesian government for five years. And now, currently, the, this system is used in, the, in their government. So uh, you can see uh, on the bottom, uh, there are 11 min ministries or institute. Uh, this institute uh, is uh, like a participant for the NSDI system. So they create uh, their own uh, mapping data, but they want to use uh, other ministries' mapping data. So they are currently share the many of the uh, mapping data uh, uh, each other. So this uh, system started uh, because of uh, the uh, government uh, strong leadership. Uh, you can see this is uh, Jokowi, uh, president of Indonesia. 
uh, he decided to make a gov uh, presidential uh, law, presidential uh, regulation to make a one map. Uh, th that is one map policy we call. So he mentioned to create a, a information sh sharing system and uh, they, uh, he decided to make a standard for geospatial information data. So this is the start point of uh, uh, NSDI system. So uh, actually there are a uh, long history, uh, but we collaborate with the Japanese government and the Japanese government decided to make a fund, an uh, ODA fund to the Indonesian government. And uh, we start this uh, project 2010. So this, this is the sample or uh, screenshot of uh, Indonesia NSTI system. So what uh, we learned from this project is here. So we, I understand uh, the first point, uh, important point is uh, the strong leadership uh, by the government or customer for us. So this is uh, this case, uh, Indonesian government, Indonesian uh, Geospatial Institute uh, had a, a very strong uh, power and the leadership. So that is uh, very important. And the uh, second one is uh, technology. Of course, the technology is also important, but uh, not only the technology, uh, but uh, important is uh, number three, third one. Uh, training, data migration, system operation, and the system maintenance. So, not only the system itself, but uh, also the training, uh, capacity building, and uh, such kind of, uh, uh, how can I say, mi migration to the know-how, or how to use the system, is uh, very, very important, I believe. And the uh, last part is uh, example uh, of application on NSDI. So once the NSDI system uh, developed and operation in operation, uh, many uh, ministry and many companies can create uh, their own application on NSDI. So this is uh, one example of uh, Japan case. So. You can see this. This is a picture of Tokyo, city of Tokyo. There are a lot of uh, construction happening in Tokyo, and uh, this is the uh, construction to bury the uh, important facilities underground. So, uh, like, such as uh, power line, uh, telecommunication line, and gas pipes. All the uh, many of the facilities are. Uh, uh, tends to uh, dig underground uh, these days. But the problem is uh, uh, no one understands the uh, exact location of the pipes and the network uh, so because uh, there are no map information underground. So uh, we had a lot of serious accident when the construction company dig the uh, ground uh, they hit the uh, uh, gas pipes uh, instead of uh, water pipe. So such kind of things make a uh, very serious uh, situation. Uh, this is a case of uh, Japan uh, several uh, years ago. But uh, the uh, Japanese government decided to create an uh, uh, application on NSDI. And uh, they uh, make a special uh, organization. You can see the top of the, uh, this page, uh, Road Administrator, uh, you can see. So Road Administrator is a controller uh, of the map data. And uh, they uh, have a NSDI uh, system and they have an application uh, how to arrange the construction uh, and uh, the how to schedule the construction. So 
uh, such a kind of application is uh, on the NSDI. And uh, there is, uh, because uh, there is an uh, organization, especially for the such kind of uh, business, uh, Japanese government uh, can control uh, well about uh, this kind of uh, serious uh, situation. So uh, this is a conclusion and a summary uh, of my presentation. So first one is uh, that uh, special information should be promoted as an integrator of information in all phases of nas uh, national de development cycle. Uh, this is very important. And uh, uh, secondly, I would like to uh, uh, explain again, uh, this is uh, not the technology problem. Technology is just one part of uh, the uh, NSDI or the information sharing system. The important is uh, uh, how to train the uh, operator or how we can migrate our know-how to the other country. And uh, the policy, policy making is also very important. So we think that uh, uh, not only the technical, but also the total uh, cycle uh, is necessary to uh, make a success for the information sharing system. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Otake. Uh, we have one minute, so uh, if you have question or comment, Is that okay? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to invite the next speaker, the last speaker in this session. Uh, oh, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm David Karanja. I'm from Canada Service. I'll uh, present on um, the experiences that we've had um, in using uh, technology in addressing wildlife crime. Um, most speakers have talked about um, the development, the policy makers, we have uh, innovators here. But uh, from the other spectrum of uh, law enforcement as users, will give our experiences or the challenges that we've had and the opportunities that, um, uh, that uh, science, technology, and innovation has had in improving um, wildlife uh, situation. Uh, for the benefit of some of the participants here, that's where Kenya is, it's in East Africa. Uh, we enable our partners here, uh, Tanzania. And we have 8% um, of um, protected areas Eight percent of our land mass is protected areas. We have a series of um, national parks, reserves, forest reserves, and marine parks. Now that we have uh, um, uh, the, the, the coastline, in the size of almost uh, the island, we are slightly uh, larger than the island as a, as, a, as, a, as a country. We have, uh, in, in formal introduction, we have a um, variety of species, uh, both for flora and, 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 and fauna. And we have the largest population of rhinos in the world, and um, fourth largest population of African elephants. And we've seen some progress. We had some difficult years in the past, uh, but if you can see from the uh, figures below, we've seen our population uh, recovering in terms of um, in terms of uh, elephants and rhino uh, population. So all these, just like in many 
sub-Sahara Africa countries, um, we rely on um, natural resources for our development and livelihoods, and uh, is a national security issue. And um, we have threats that need to be addressed. We are talking about um, the decline in, um, in um, species, the consistence, be it marine, uh, be it wetlands, uh, the forest cover, we've seen some uh, decline. And this is challenges caused by mainly by uh, climate change, um, the, the poaching of um, rhinos and elephants uh, for, for trophies, the deforestation also of forest, uh, forest crimes. And this is why, as governments, we need to come together and have you know, the solutions to address some of these challenges that, um, that we have. As we've had um, strong political will, the top leadership in the country has really supported us, and that's why we have some of the gains that you've uh, enumerated in this presentation. So, with the details that we've talked this morning about um, the biodiversity uh, across all states, then we need to tap on the technology to address some of these um, uh, challenges. And this may be because crime itself has sophisticated. In the morning we say this is crime. We have different players. We have dif different interests. So as law enforcement officers um, who are in this room and who are working in the field, we need to tap and capitalize on existing modern law enforcement technology which will in turn enhance our operations. On our part, uh, Kenya, uh, the Kenya Dive Service, where I work, we have been implementing a, f a comprehensive force monitoring program that uh, in one, we leverage on the, the, the technology. And we are doing this by having a light mixture of both people, skills, and technology. Technology is just an enabler. So we need capacity building, we need people who can easily adopt this um, uh, technology, who can utilize in our day-to-day -day, uh, operations. And some of the ways that we are using this is we have um, platforms that um, uh, technology enabled and approaching information platforms. We have an existing model of crime um, uh, database. We are utilizing deploying a real-time tactical command and control centers, which brings in its 24 hours manned, which brings in um, uh, integrated uh, data from patrols, uh, uh, f f from uh, uh, f foot patrols, vehicle patrols, um, uh, from the rangers using GPS, uh, GPS uh, kits in the, in, the, in the field. For in, in terms of analytics and definitions, we have an intelligence database and analysis so that we can uh, make decisions. And uh, use of um, uh, coloring and monitoring this for security, uh, minimizing human life conflict, and monitoring um, habitat, land use. Just a, uh, that's a, uh, a representation of um, how the data is integrated from the field, from the rangers who are doing the patrols, uh, to the officers who are at the uh, headquarters who can make decisions by integrating all the data that is um, uh, collected. Another strategy is that um, we're implementing um, a science, technology, and research strategy because we need to have decisions that are, have evidence, what are called the evidence-based uh, decision uh, making. And we utilize, both in the morning we talked about high technology and technology. We're utilizing the modern technology and also the indigenous knowledge system, uh, where um, the traditional uh, knowledge which will um, assist us in addressing the challenges that I've, I've mentioned. Also, we're having um, a geospatial uh, monitoring um, uh, platform. Uh, we're also seeing, uh, we have developed a forensic lab, we'll talk about forensics in the morning, uh, prof but from a law enforcement perspective, uh, we have a state-of-the-art forensic laboratory. It's a second one in, in Africa. It does uh, DNA forensics. For, to support prosecution. I remember in the law enforcement cycle, prosecution is equally important, uh, much is that detection and law enforcement. So we have enhanced the capacity of the government to prosecute poaching and uh, increased uh, convictions, which in essence, in turn, um, uh, acts as a deterrence and improves on law enforcement. 
What have we seen um, the achievement from all these uh, technology and uh, deployments is one, we are studying the patterns of uh, poaching and crime, which, uh, which in turn um, deters and poachers from um, committing crime. We have improved perception of offenders. We have um, efficiently and effectively collected and processed uh, uh, big data that we, we have and we can identify um, threats. Uh, use of technology plus in, uh, other, other strategies that we have used has led to reduction of poaching. We are talking about 85% reduction in poaching and 79% reduction in, uh, in elephant uh, poaching. And through it, we are also uh, been able to disrupt and dismantle uh, the syndicates. That's because uh, this technology is uh, giving us data uh, to, to run trends, patterns, and associations. This was mentioned by the presenter from um, um, Interpol. Despite all these successes, there are some challenges in adoption of technology and deployment of technology in the, in, in, in the field. One is there is no absorption and the capacity and the cost involved. We we'll understand that um, we are covering large areas and um, technology comes, changes very quickly. So the adoption of the social capacity is, 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 is inadequate. And the flip side of technology is that also the, the poachers and the traffickers are also um, are using the same to, to, to aid in, in, in crime. So that's the, the, the flip side of, um, of this. And we have as policymakers, as law enforcement officers, we have to be steps ahead. There's constraints in coverage. Remember, most of these national parks are in very remote areas, but even telephone uh, connect connectivity is, is, is low. So in terms of getting the real time um, uh, data is a, is, is a challenge. And let's now you, you deploy satellites, which is also the cost is um, uh, expensive. Even in terms of a um, the equipment, if you're talking about coloring, uh, they have a lifespan of, of some years. So what happens after the, the battery possibly they, 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 they go down? Then um, sometimes they find that um, there is underfunding uh, and limited sharing of research and, 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 and knowledge. And there is a um, lack of integration of various platforms. You realize that we may be having some technological platforms that are, 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 are different. Uh, one equipment uh, which is different from from the other so lack of um, the integration it becomes a challenge this can be addressed um because you have opportunities to, to to do this and one of them is as a country kenya has um has a blueprint on how to conserve and enhance security of wildlife in our country what we're calling the national order strategy and we need there are several pillars and one of the pillars is that um we are Leveraging on um, research and knowledge, that is number five, and capacity and training under evidence-based uh, decision making, and um, we've focused. The country is focusing on um, innovation and, and technology, where we emphasise that for, for successful um, conservation. Uh, Kenya's economic blueprint, what we call Kenya Vision 2030, has strong emphasis on science, technology, and innovation through R&D initiatives. And this, we can use this to, to further uh, uh, engage or further deploy technology to assist in wildlife conservation in the country. Um, as a country, uh, there's a high penetration of, of internet. We're talking about real-time uh, technological solutions, which requires uh, investment in infrastructure. Um, Kenya has a, a useful population and has um, the second um, internet uh, access penetration rates in, in, in Africa. So you can use that uh, as, um, as an opportunity uh, to deploy um, um, modern technologies that can be used in enhancing security and management uh, in the country. Uh, then think about the knowledge and technology transfer. Uh, there's a process of um, best practice solution providers. Uh, the researchers, the academia, the government uh, agencies. And in this, we can take advantage and develop an integrated um, holistic approach to build what we're calling real-time effective um, uh, system. So in concluding, we're saying that um, as we have the, the, the diversity of the, uh, the, the globe uh, declining, 
is becoming more important uh, for us as a global community within the local, regional, and international cooperation to adopt and deploy innovative uh, solutions that the users down there, those who are doing the, the, the actual uh, pat patrols and operations, they can utilize so that we guarantee the security of um, natural heritage and the security of our citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I enjoy the, the success stories and our challenges um, in Kenya. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions or comments? We have time. Thank you. Are you okay? Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Now, I would like to have a coffee break here. Uh, is it okay? If we can. to announce that there will be a coffee break for the next half an hour. We'll resume at, at 4.20.